Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending where you are in the world. Um, thanks for joining this TELET webinar, Six Buzzwords You Need to Know to Understand IoT Connectivity. I'm Amanda Flink, the Head of Global Events here at TELET, and I will be moderating our uh, discussion today. Um, to explain this topic, I'm pleased to be joined by two speakers. Uh, first, we have Ayal Yasmin, the Director of Product Management, IoT Connectivity at TELET. And second, we have Noam Shani, Connectivity Product Marketing Director at Talit. Uh, thank you both for joining us today. Glad to be here. Just before I hand it, just before I hand mm -hmm. it over to Noam to start our presentation, I do have a few quick reminders. Um, audience, we do have time to answer some questions at the end of this presentation. Simply submit a question by posting in the questions box located near the bottom of your screen. Um, also, please be sure to check out the resources section for some additional information on our topic today. Um, and finally, we will send out this replay link to all attendees at the conclusion of the webinar. Um, so with that, guys, I will hand it over to you to start our presentation. Thanks, Amanda, and uh, hello again, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us for what we believe and hope will be an interesting and enlightening webinar. As an intro, I would like to give you a scope of, uh, um, of what we're going to go over today in high level. And we will try to understand the complexity space that the global and local IoT solutions lives in, mainly in the connectivity domain. Pointing out the critical aspects we need to take under consideration when building an IoT product, again, focusing on connectivity aspects, of course. What are the main buzzwords uh, out there needed to be mastered by all, uh, all that is hands-on IoT product and deployment? And finally, what and how uh, tell it offer you to solve most connectivity challenges? So let's get started. First, we must kick off uh, with the acknowledgement of the trend numbers from analysts. Most of them aligned around the 30 billion IoT devices till 2025. I think this is a fair intro that justifies our presence here. Um, together, and basically it tells us that uh, we are part of a valid growing exponential market period. Nevertheless, uh, there are some obstacles, uh, or better articulated, let's say it like that, challenges uh, needed to be addressed. We can definitely agree that this is not a simple, and this is not simple to achieve. Uh, as mentioned, there are challenges. For an example, regarding restricted markets that need special attention and solutions or like mission critical applications that we are going to talk about uh, furthermore in the following slide that became more and more common. Not only security related, it's also becoming a clear demand for more business use cases. Uh, like who can argue with the need of, let's say, a point of sale that one minute of downtime means losing money for them? Isn't that mission critical for them as well? Uh, maybe I'm exaggerating a bit for, for the sake of the argument here about mission critical, uh, and there is enough space for simple more contained needs that won't be that sensitive. Uh, yet I believe that this is one of the paths that IoT global connectivity will need to go through in the following years. Okay, so we need to acknowledge the problem before addressing it or having the ability to fix it, uh, uh, we will uh, be able here in a very simple, straightforward, visual way, see what daily basis dilemmas and challenges we face. The main one is managing multi-suppliers operation. That breaks down into, let's say, several different contracts, different purchase and supply procedures, um, different billing outputs, new data aggregation from different connectivity management platforms, uh, different network configuration, etc. All this, um, regardless of the, the overhead of dealing with multiple different entities and overall managing different commercial and operational businesses. A real life example, uh, lately I had a conversation with a major potential customer that explained us that he is dealing with more than 10 different connectivity suppliers globally. The amount of human resource needed for this end kind of managing operation is overwhelming. That vast majority of that, of this setup, could be dismissed by choosing the right uh, connectivity global MVNO uh, for sure. So who are the usual suspects available to solve those challenges we mentioned? We can see in the following three pillars the types of, of connectivity providers out there. 
and I highlighted some of the strengths and challenges on providing their solution to the market. Starting from the left to the right, uh, first of all, the MNOs, more IoT-oriented ones, obviously very price-driven with strong hold on the local market, so that's a clear advantage for them. Mostly local, using their own IMSIAs, as, as mentioned, they are local. This is relevant, talking, taking under consideration the local regulation uh, for national roaming, in most cases, that are not permitted. And most of the human resources is located locally in the MNO's territory, so not very global presence, basically, here. The second one is the IoT MVNOs that are more characterized as a very technology global oriented companies. Vast majority of them um, implement and, and support customers with multi IMSI and multi profile based on US, UI, UICC. Yes, they are global companies, uh, yet limited glo in global presence, let's say sales or support less. IoT MVNOs are all about connectivity. So this is challenging if we're taking under consideration the consolidation trend in the market uh, towards the multi-solution providers, like I will present in a, in a, in a second. So the third pillar um, represents Telit's position and some other uh, hardware companies that consolidated into the service provider, uh, provider companies like Telit as well. First and foremost, being a full IoT MVNO is crucial when uh, with multi IMSI and multi profile abilities. This is this is a must. Telit as a veteran in the market for over 20 years of of selling models globally, has its vast presence, experience, and basically we have foot on ground for either technical support, pre-sale needs, or selling entities. And one of the important things and assets is having the ability to embed connectivity within our modules and offer combined uh, embedded solution to the market. We can see significant activities around this lately as combined solutions offered by hardware uh, companies having the clear view of the whole value chain of the connectivity part in the product. Let's go over um, some crucial elements uh, your IoT product depends on. After understanding the complex reality and the players uh, out there willing to solve and, and, and enable your IoT solution, uh, let's, do, let's do some uh, in-depth digging towards some um, critical elements needed to be pointed out and how it reflects almost every aspect of our IoT product or deployment. So the first one I want to, to point out is the mission critical. First, everything become mission critical lately. If it's a classic use case of security or business continuity, up to straightforward, pure business revenue loss cases, all is mission critical today. You can't go uh, global mission critical without the ability to be redundant and flexible enough, like having the ability to switch network when outage occurred, for example and local use cases around national roaming restrictions have become non-relevant for most regions when having a, a more than one network as a backup or if multi-coverage needed cross country. This is being handled with the multi imsi that covers most of, the, uh, most of that with the add-on of EUICC capabilities that uh, AL will elaborate more uh, in the presentations. Another one is the permanent roaming. No need to elaborate more on that. This is a common obstacle needed a workaround, and mostly through EUICC-based solutions. One more is the CMP, the Connectivity Management Platform. You can't really manage all this without clear visibility. If it's monitoring online on daily, weekly, or monthly reports that needed to be uh, subjected, Automation, one of the important aspects, making the daily managing seamless as possible. The last one I would like to, to mention here is our part as an IoT MVNO. For example, no more troubling our minds around technology sunsets. This could be managed behind the scene on the network level, for example, and getting clear cost and COVID stability that we can agree it's an important part of the life cycle of your product. All seamless with one SKU one deployment. So let's recap for a minute and, and take an example of a real-life product deployment journey uh, as we see it. 
As you remember, the complex reality that your IoT product uh, I presented in the beginning, uh, with emphasizing more on the deployment part, uh, uh, deployment part uh, we can see the classic journey your product needs to go through. If it's uh, to start with, with the manufactured and the assembling, uh, let's say for the, our example in China, need local connectivity for testing before packaging and shipping it for, for your global deployment. As a part of that, you need to deal with local supplier uh, regarding contract, technology adjustments if needing, different billings, and etc. Then the deployment itself, uh, in this case, I'm presenting a simple uh, use case when need to deploy in two regions. I don't know if it's simple, but let's say for two regions for, for, for their sake. One is in Europe and the second one is in North America. Again, each one needs the different contract, network configuration, connectivity management, part, different connectivity management platforms, and onboarding processes as, as basically managing a multi-supplier operation all in all. This is a very big headache we need to uh, uh, deal with. For that exact reality, Global IoT and VNOs like Telit exist. We, are, we in Telit uh, would like to relieve you from handling all that multi-supplier cacophony that we live in and act like uh, a headache remedy in, in, in a manner for that, for that sake. By having all parts uh, of managed IoT solution under one roof, we can, we, we can sure stand behind this uh, statement Now I will show you how. A full IoT Tier 1 MVNO based on multi imsi network for global deployments, check. Multi-profile based on EUICC where needed, most around roaming restrictions use cases as I presented. And as for a new emerging one as a multi-profile for better redundant solution. And basically uh, manifest, manifesting the one, uh, the one SKU uh, managing uh, uh, around the one contract one onboarding uh, process, this one CMP, one billing, all that uh, with the holistic 360 view on your IoT product by handling with more than 20 years of experience, your module, your managing platform in each different level, a device that the, the CMP has mentioned, and connectivity champions. Adding to that, uh, uh, our world-class support and service to complete the story of Telit. So this was my part and, and, and moving to AYAL for the main course, uh, the, the six buzzwords. So the flows is your AYAL. Uh, I will catch you up later on uh, for the summary part. Thank you. Thank you, Noam. Okay, so, <clears throat> so now after we understood the critical elements and the solution for the complexity of the IoT connectivity provider, Let's go over and understand some of the main buzzwords and technology that we are around IoT itself and the MVNOs. First, we can, we can segment it and categorize this list to two main groups. The first group is the cellular technology, which are mainly cover the different generation of the cellular technology, which the IoT, of course, is part of it as well as additional sub-technology and sub-category -te terminology. The second group is the cellular platform, which includes those two main SIM technology, which actually contains the main part of the future-proof solution to the IoT deployment. In the coming slides, we'll deep dive to each of those words. Of course, you can find more buzzwords in those domains, like the eSIM, iSIM, a good CMP solution, etc. But let's focus now on those terminology. And we mentioned uh, shortly some others uh, during the, the session. Now, our first group of the uh, cellular technology buzzword, we have the different technology generation. We will not deeply explain and described in this webinar. I assume you are all familiar with this topic, mainly that the <clears throat> bandwidth and the speed is increasing from one generation to a newer one is the market demands to support faster and more data to be transferred. On the pie chart, you can see that we mentioned the voice over LTE. This technology is required mainly as uh, the traditional 3G and CS is removing from the operator support, where there are still demands for voice support in the IoT market. In the right list, you can see the core network, <clears throat> when more and more IoT providers are moving 
and establishing their own core network. We intended to launch it two years ago. In the following slide, I will explain the benefits for that and why we need it. When you the world coverage, the info that is where does your connectivity provider can support you and provide your service. The service is required from the first minute that your IoT device is turned on and you need to be active and send some data. This is also important to have a good and fair prices in those locations. And of course, not to be limited to local restriction for the local operator or the local government restriction. Like as mentioned earlier, the permanent roaming restriction. I will share with you a good coverage solution we provide and the way to provide this good coverage in one of the next slides. As mentioned before, more and more operators are closing their 3G network in order to free space, or to free resources and free some spectrum to the new technology like the 5G. This activity called the sunset. The result of that is that the current device which are working only on 3G will have real problems to continue and to be operated. By the way, the 2G network are, are still continue to be operated, even though the 3G are not, so the device can be downgraded and work with the 2G. The sunset is depend on the country and on the operators who decide for this move. Future proof is a good, uh, is for me one of the, the main topics to, to be discussed. It actually means that when you select the IoT connectivity provider, you need to make sure that it will provide you a solution for the long run. Again, in one of the next slides, I will deep dive on this topic as well. Those sub network are part of the 4G MTC. The technology here is having lower bit per second in order to save resources and battery for the remote device on site. Therefore, those technology are mainly targeted for the IoT device, where we don't have an external power supply which connected to the device, and we need to save the, the power resources. The NBIoT is up to 160 kilobytes per second, and the CAT 10 is up to 1.4 megabytes. One of the features in those technologies is the PSM, so the power saving mode, which enables the device to, to stay kind of sleep and still remaining registered to the network. So just to summarize this one, those two categories answer the demands for low power and low cost solution for low data with IoT application and device. Let's continue with the, the high level overview of the future of uh, global IoT connectivity. So the, the global cellular ecosystem evolution may cause disruption to the worldwide connectivity and uh, of course to the IoT itself as it's part of it. On the left side, you can see the main obstacles, the main challenges that we need to, to handle based on that. The visited network operators are trying to recover revenues by adding cost to the IoT device, which are roaming there. So some of them are increasing the inbound roaming rates to the, to, in order to recover those lost. There are more and more applications requiring backup and redundancy function for mission critical users. The regulation or commercial decision may block a device with a permanent roaming restriction. And the new technologies just we just mentioned before require the new roaming equipment, commercial, and even more testing and implementation. So to overcome all this, uh, all of that, <clears throat> the IoT and we know we need to, we need to offer a full solution as described in this slide. <clears throat> you need to have a, a true global MNOs partnership with several incident agreement, including localization via the UICC, as we have in our tenant NG Energy Core Network Solution, which allow us to support the advanced team technology, the ICM and the embedded team solution as we intend to have both the connectivity and the module. In addition, we need to have a professional, secure, and own CMP, as well as the, the one the device management for the IoT customer. As you mentioned, the, the coverage is one of the important criteria for selecting the IoT connectivity provider. Due to our same technology, both the multi-IMC and the USC, which I will deep dive in the second part of the buzzword group, we are able to provide a full global coverage of connectivity around the globe, mainly using our several sponsored coverage 
the combination of the US capability, which allowing us to provide local profile support in countries with permanent warming restriction. The main point here is that for a global deployment, you want to have only one thing, one skew which will fit to all the countries that you are going to deploy. This is without the need to, to replace the scene per location of the deployment. So then you want to gain all the benefits of the IoT and VNO as now described in the previous slides. These are some specific countries which we don't have coverage capabilities for now, but those are very few and some are coming soon with our Telic Next Plus, the USCC product. When you are an IoT provider at its own core network, you are gaining a lot of capabilities and enhancement compared to other IoT providers. As you can see in this slide, those are the main benefits a core network can provide to the customer, same as we did when we established the core network two years ago. With the core network, you are the owner of the service, of the technology, and you are not dependent on other parties for any needs to needs or requests that you, you want to, to enhance your service. As well, you gain better secured network and secure elements within, within your own core network. Same goes for the commercial offering you can provide. For example, we Intel it launches the new prepaid service, which is based on our core network capabilities in addition to the regular prospect service. Any problems that, that you cause in the service, in the network, you have a full capabilities and your own tools to monitor it for better investigation and, of course, to fix the problem by your own supporting. In addition, you can contact directly your local IMSI or operators to fix the issues that you, you analyze in the network. Last, our core network has a redundancy server, servers for high availability, as well as gear redundant for in different continents for backup and low latency service. In the second group we cut, that we categorize, we have the cellular platform buzzword, which include these two, the two main SIM technology. The first one is the multi imsi So IMSI is a unique identifier of the home MNO when we are roaming. Therefore, the multi imsi is a several IMSI that are populated in, in one SIM. The multi imsi application is the ability to switch between the different supported IMSI which include in the team, according to some predefined rules or by specific request or specific trigger to modify the IMSI, which can be done or remotely over the air or by a local command. Ultimately, the multi IMSI is a solution that creates better room roaming footprint, footprint thanks to the availability of multiple IMSI belonging to more roaming sponsors, so that you can choose the, the option with either the best price or the best coverage with the IMSI. As well, it's a good solution for mission critical case. As described before that, where one IMSI is down, you can continue and working with the other IMSI in the team. The second type of the new SIM technology and the second buzzword now is the EUSCC, which is short for Embedded Universal Integrated Circuit Card. Yes, you see the capability. It's the feature of the SIM to be remotely provisioned over the air, including MNO profile swap from remote. The RSP, the remote SIM provisioning mechanism, is specified by two GSMA master document, one for the consumer and the other for the M2M use case. The USC definition has nothing to do with the physical form factor of the SIM. USC can be a traditional plugging plastic SIM card, a SIM chip to be soldered on the, onto a PCB, or a piece of software emulating the SIM functionality and running inside the SOC, or even inside the chip itself. There's another popular term, surely you heard about it, is the eSIM, short for embedded SIM. It is commonly used in, in, a, in the market as a synonymous for the EUICC, but is as slightly different connotation. It usually refers to the specific form factor for the SIM chip to be soldered down onto a PCB and also as the RSP capabilities as USCCS. 
So we can say that the ESIM is usually referred to the SIM chip to be soldered on the PCB, and uh, it can be a multiple vision like the USC. All in all, the key point here is that thanks to the RST capabilities, ESC allow us for flexibility of changing the connectivity provider during the lifetime of a device without the need to have a costly visit to the device itself to do physically SIM swap. We can see here two main pillars of the USC use case. The first one is to provide the most suitable profile for the customer need. It can be per coverage needs or can be impacted by the cost of, the, of a given MNO and mainly can be impacted and defined due to permanent tournament restriction in this given uh, location. The second use case is for business resilience and assurance, allowing the user not to be locked in to a given MNO for all its lifetime, as well as per customer plan in advance to use its own preferred and selected con uh, connectivity in that scene. This is what we call BYOC, bring your own connectivity approach. You can also say that there is additional benefit and advantage here, and this is from the logistic advantage, where you can use one SKU for a global deployment where in each location of the deployment, you will enable or download the required profile. So those are the, the buzzwords we focus in the webinar. For sure there are more, but hope we have been able to clarify those, uh, those for you. Uh, let's go back to, to Norm to complete this webinar. Um, thanks, Ayar. Um, as mentioned before, um, let's elaborate more um, Let's elaborate more about one of the important parts of our offering as we see it, um, the customer service that actually complements the, uh, uh, um, the whole offering of Telit at the end of the day. Customer service uh, in Telit splits into two parallel paths, uh, the automation and enablement services and the human resources. First, regarding billing and connectivity management platform, those are the two strong, those we have two strong automatic and high-end tools. The first one is by managing and optimizing billing, putting aside the overhead of dealing recurrently with invoices and overcoming bill shocks. The second one, the connectivity management platform, the CMP, a tele proprietary for monitoring and analyzing and automation for streamlining the operation. These are essential tools needed to be available as a foundation for supporting our customers, for sure. All those handled by dedicated tools as the CMP or behind the scenes solution as the Optimus. As for the second part, uh, we present a clear advantage on the in-depth understanding of an IoT product regarding all connectivity aspects. All that by dealing with module to begin with, through the same product embedded or not, up to the connectivity product offer. We have vast experience in each part of, uh, for it for a, long to, for a long of time. Adding to that, being spread around the globe with footprint in most regions and markets, acting like uh, as a trusted advisor, say, supporting in multiple languages 24-7, 360 uh, days a year, is our clear forte and added value we offer to the market and our customers for sure. So to, to summarize it all, being a trusted experience with world-class service global tier one, IoT and Vino is our bread and butter day-to-day -day effort, but not only by stating it, uh, but mostly by delivering it. I would like to thank you all for joining us today and hope we have an enlightening your uh, with some uh, key buzzwords and crucial elements regarding your IoT product and deployment, and hope that you can plan uh, for your following years with us, uh, your deployment. Thank you all. 
Thank you, guys. Um, really, really great information here. Um, we do have time for some questions. Um, before we get to the questions, though, I am going to drop a poll on the screen here. Um, if you'd like to have one of our experts contact you, please just feel free to respond here on the poll, and we will be sure to have someone reach out to you. Um, we have gotten a few questions here, uh, so we'll just dive right in. Um, first question I have, why should I use multi-MZ roaming SIM in a local market? I will take this, uh, this question. Um, so let's take an example of a large tender lately published regarding, um, regarding highway smart lightning poles. First to recap, this is a domestic need, um, um, uh, a local roaming through multi-MZ. As mentioned, a restricting national roaming situation, as in most markets. The clear demand was in, in, in that tender, uh, for our example, was having a 100% coverage on all routes for managing the smart poles. Obviously, they exaggerated and updated it uh, uh, for over 90% uh, of the highways routes later on. Uh, there were almost there were uh, there were also different technologies that could be presented uh, to as we call it to fill the gap. If no cellular technologies were available, uh, more expensive and and complex for sure. Uh, by offering inherently a multi ims solution, we can optimize and enhance the coverage with more than one local network. Just to be clear, local MNOs couldn't participate such such tender. Um, without banking with an IoT MVNO with multi MZ solution. Even if they implemented on their own network a multi MZ solution, that is not, that basically it's not common for them. National roaming is not applicable due to regulation. This is a straightforward need and workaround that mostly IoT MVNOs in multi MZ can supply. And, and we're putting aside uh, the need for eSIM or EYCC for multi profile needs as a backup like uh, AL presented in these slides, uh, a more redundant solution or insurance use case, as we call it. Um, uh, the ability to leave a supplier, uh, for example, and to switch network without touching uh, the end device may be crucial in some cases. So this is the main reason uh, why multi imz roaming uh, in a local market uh, uh, is crucial here. So I believe that's a strong, valid example. Great, thank you. Um, next question I see. Um, it looks like there is another buzzword which you all didn't cover here today, um, embedded connectivity. Why didn't you cover that? I will answer that. Uh, the embedded connectivity, it's, it's, a, it's, a huge, it's a huge topic. It's a full topic, I think, for, for a full uh, standalone webinar. Uh, of course, we support this one. Uh, this is the the bed connectivity is the ability to have module and connectivity together. It can be a, an iSIM solution that you your module is part of the included connectivity inside it, or or a given a, a, a small chip that is part of the module. So we can tell it uh, even if uh, I think we have a, a separate webinar that we did in the past for that. So it's a, it's a good buzzword. It's a, one of the future for the for the connectivity and the module, and just encourage you to 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 read about this uh, this topic in a separate webinar that we that we did in the past. Thanks. Yeah, and if you're interested in finding um, that previous webinar on embedded connectivity, um, you can find that on tellit.com. Should be under our resources section. Um, if you just find your way to the the webinars piece under resources. Um, next question I have, um, how is TELIT addressing the North American market regarding permanent roaming restrictions? Sounds like there are some winds of change, maybe more than a rumor regarding removing permanent roaming restrictions. Uh, so this is probably true uh, and for sure a hot topic lately. Uh, we intel it addressed this is issue by providing uh, the vastest options available in North America market. Um, basically, it's subjected to the current time because we know that all of our competitors are working and the whole market is working on, on, on enhancing their solutions. Uh, intel it, we break it down into four different solutions. 
The first one is the classic uh, reselling local carriers, the all, all, all the big three as we call them. Uh, we are doing it uh, as many others for several years. It is still a valid solution for local deployment, less global and less uh, answering to the one SKU uh, use case uh, if wanted to be implemented. The second one is, is, is roaming with the European NZ. This is subject yet to permanent roaming restrictions in some cases. And I can tell you uh, that lately some activities and less rugged attitude from some carriers allows us to, to and, and to our competitors more flexibility uh, in offering roaming in North America through the uh, European NZ. That wasn't taken under consideration until now. The third one, uh, is within EU ICC capabilities for applying a more multi-profile offering with at least two, three different profiles uh, on a single SIM. For example, Telit uh, Next Profile uh, as a bootstrap uh, for a global roaming multi-IMSI-based solution uh, for global deployment. And with a second one, uh, local MNO uh, profile uh, for North America deployment, again, all in one SIM. So this was the third one. And the fourth, and uh, tell it uh, actually lately uh, in last September 2022 launched its uh, North America core network with the expansion of, of our network tell it next. This is a unique solution with local INSI that can roam on other local networks. Not all networks apply yet, uh, some rural areas have less coverage, yet having more than one network through a multi INSI solution in North America is is, is is actually new and exciting for us. Again, not all networks are available here yet. The combination between the unique TELIT North America profile with enhanced new roaming abilities opens new possibilities in North America market for sure. So this basically, uh, these are the four available solutions implemented in North America as we understand. Um, I hope that answers the question. Great, thank you. Um, and audience, feel free to follow up on that one um, if you need further clarification. Um, Ayal, this is probably a good question for you. Um, it said you mentioned the two SIM technology solution, um, EUICC and multi -MZ. Uh Which one is better or preferred? Okay, this is a, it's a good question. Uh, is, I, don't, I don't think that uh, is a preferred solution for that. Each 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 solution, each each technology have its own benefit and complexity from the other side. The UICC giving you a, a local profile, so it's a, like a pure SIM that you are in in this country, having no issue with with permanent roaming, but it's uh, more complicated complicated to to establish the uh, the in integration for the for the the SMSR and the SMDP and to do this uh, integration with the local MNO. The multi imz give you, a, a, in the same SIM, give you the several roaming, or, or local roaming and the, the roaming IMZ to, to be, to use in these uh, operators in this country. And you are using the same SIM, the same APN, the same MSSD, and you're not changing anything over there. So it's have its own benefit. It's even, it's easier to uh, to implement. Uh, but for this, you need to have your own core network. So each one of them it's, have its own uh, benefit, and uh, depending on the use case, we believe that the, the best uh, the best uh, solution is the combination of them. So you have the the ability to, in a given location, to use the the USCC when you're forming or you bring your own connectivity, and the, and the other one, the global deployment, to use the to use the the local MC. So again, the, the combination is the, the best preferred one. Uh, if which one of them you need to have uh, the, all the content or all integration, but we also believe that the USCC is 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 a, is a, go, is a strong trend that the uh, more and more uh, uh, profile would, would go to this solution. So I, I hope I answer this uh, this question. Great. Um, I think maybe we've got time for one more question here, um, and hang with me because this one's a little long. Um, you mentioned your solution is best positioned for mission critical applications. Uh, what about rural regions with bad coverage, things like maritime, um, applications that know for sure there won't be cellular available? Uh, what will help fill those coverage gaps? 
I will take that. Um, actually, this is a very good question as well, uh, like before. Good questions. Um, as we all know, uh, that cellular global connectivity is subjected at the end of the day uh, to local MNOs, radio layout site, uh, sites, for example, um, where there is no cellular signaling and all in all no cellular service is not available. And is not available. It doesn't really matter if you have the best, uh, let's say, virtual core network as it by itself. So you can see that uh, uh, filling the gaps, as, as asked, uh, uh, as he called it, it has been addressed from lately, for example, from Apple uh, with the launch of iPhone 14 with satellite capabilities as a premium service yet. Uh, we know for a fact that uh, Apple commoditized services that we didn't uh, uh, thought will be affordable, uh, yet it happens all the time. It's exactly like uh, adding eSIM as a different solution in North America on their devices. We all know, uh, it's a matter of time until this will be the common way that we will consume cellular packages for sure. So satellite add-ons for IoT application will be out there uh, not in a long time. Uh, it will still be premium, uh, for sure more expensive service uh, as a gap filler uh, or backup solution to, to cellular connectivity that still, I believe, uh, will be based on cellular roaming for the following years. So this is uh, my perspective on that. Great, thanks, Noam. Um, I believe that is all the time that we have for today. Um, audience, please be sure to check your inboxes in the coming days. We will send out that replay link. Um, I all know, um, thank you so much um, for all the, the great information and the Q&A here, and thank you all who joined us.